it's always nice to connect on these full moons. It's a pulse, right? And we come each time we get sort of a reinforcement of energy, right? Of energy that really makes alignments in ourselves and corrections and adjustments to work with the energies that are coming in. And the world has so many issues <laughs> at the moment, right? And there's just so many things that the world, the world, humanity is grappling with, trying to solve, messing up, making it worse, making it better. It's all happening, it's all happening. And so when we meditate, we are offering an opportunity, right, to help to hold with the highest good, to hold and help to, to make a better world. I mean, that's really what this is all about. Besides that it lines us up personally, of course, we join in a group like this and we can actually coalize all of these energies to bring this infusion of consciousness in this group that goes beyond this group. And, of course, connecting around the world to all conscious souls that are aware in any way, shape, or form. And don't forget that there are millions of meditators out there that are very aware of moon pulses. And these cons this pulse that moves through our world every 28 and a half days or so, we have another full moon. What's unique about this full moon is it's a blue moon which some of you know. And so a blue moon is when there are two full moons in the same sign, not in the same month. That is not really a blue moon. The true blue moon is in the same sign. So today's full moon is in one degree Aquarius. So the next full moon will be also in Aquarius. So we're going to have Aquarius, Aquarius, double. So two hits of Aquarius coming through, or two, and solar Leo, too. So we're getting two hits of Leo as well as the undercurrent of this, or the spiritual current, I should say, of this, where we're getting this big influx of Aquarian energy. So at one degree for this full moon, which, we, which was exact just at 737, so not 20 minutes ago, we were having the full impact of that energy, and so we're very close to it still. And you may feel the sort of shimmering that's been happening because so many people around the planet do exact time full moons. So many people I know, I'm connected so ma to so many groups. I just got off Meditation Mount's full moon, right? And they were on exact time. There are, there are all over the world groups that are meditating at the exact time, no matter if it's 3 in the morning or you know, 4.30 in the afternoon. Whenever it happens to be, there are people that are holding around the planet with that exact time. And so we're right in it on that exact time in this double Aquarius, Aquarius at one degree. And then next month, we're going to be in that Aquarian energy again at 29, the critical degree of any sign at the end of the cycle. And so whatever we're getting in this full moon, which we're, we'll move into the meditation, it's information to download over two months, not just one month. So this is important, and whenever there's a double full moon like this, there's a reason, right? That we need that energy right now. And what is the primary energy, and from a spiritual perspective of Aquarius, is interconnectedness, right? We're all a one life, really and truly we are. And that needs to be remembered when the world is so split about any and every subject, right? It doesn't matter what it is. Even the spiritual community is split, right? Even the financial community is split. Even the political world is split. In, across the planet, there's not a subject that we're, we, uh, COVID, vaccine, no vaccine. All of these subjects are polarized right now because we are having a birth. And it's a long one, and we're still in the contractions, 
right? This is happening still, and we're still pushing through. And we are the midwives, right? This consciousness that holds and doesn't react, that holds and doesn't blame, that holds and brings out the best in each other and ourselves, rather than reaction, 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 which is what mostly is happening, right? And so we become very valuable commodities here to bring that consciousness to where you live, like Joe's in Palm Springs, <laughs> right? And there's people all over, you know, where you're from different parts of the world, different parts of the state, where you get to bring that consciousness. So when you're standing in line at the post office, there's a different energy that you're holding there. Then, can you believe this is happening? And I don't understand it. And why is it like this? And when are we going to be? And I hate wearing a mask. And Or, you know, why isn't everybody wearing a mask? All of this sort of agitated energy that's out there. Aquarian energy is above it. It's above it. It sees the bigger picture, right? It sees the plan. It sees the, the, the bird's eye view of what's happening. And so we're entering a time where we're going to have, in these next two months, perspective. Even though things are tightening in general, right? And the, the energy is gathering in a way. And so it can seem sort of worse before it gets better, right? Because it's darkest before the dawn. Like there really is this birthing that's happening. And as we are coming to it, there's, there's much dissent. There's, there's a disconnected feeling. And that word interconnectedness is in a, a good one to remember right now. We are all one. And even the internet, if you think of it, is another way that we connect on the WWW, the World Wide Web, right? That the world is not in isolation any longer. There's cameras everywhere. There's people everywhere. There's comments everywhere. Everyone is, is viewing together what's happening. And so as, as intense as it is, it, the whole world's involved with this. And so we're all witnesses. I'm going to be doing a wedding in a couple, next, not this weekend, but the next. And one of the things that we say, you know, when I, as the officiant, as I say to the people that are there, that you are participants in this. It's not just about the two, right? It's about the all. It's the community that supports it. Well, we're the community. We're, we are holding witness to what is happening here with consciousness. And so as we are birthing this world, and we are choosing, you know, in all kinds of ways about what will be, mostly unconsciously, there is plenty, plenty of consciousness on this planet. And there is plenty of beautiful design going on here, even though it may not seem like it. And so one of the things I just want to remind you is don't lose hope. You know, I, I know I, I'm talking to so many people these days, and it's just stressy. It's stressed, and people are stressed and upset and don't know what to do. Or, you know, some people don't even think about it and sort of have their head down and won't look. And the people that are looking are a little bit um, shocked <laughs> at what they're seeing in a way or sensing, right, in the energy or in reality. And that's what meditation is. It doesn't matter what the outside circumstances are, right? We say that all the time. Can you hold your center no matter what's happening around you? Can you bring yourself into the moment? Can you bring yourself into your heart? no matter what's happening. And so here we, we've built some muscles here, and a lot of you are long-term meditators, have been meditating for as many years as me and longer. And some of you have been meditating with me for all the 40 years I've been teaching it, right? So there, you know, so you've, got, you've got a muscle there. Don't underestimate that ability of yours to help hold the peace, help hold the calm as the world is going through these gyrations of change that are definitely happening. So, so another key word for Aquarius is group endeavor. And so med this, is, this is a group endeavor as we meditate together and we raise the vibration, right? Because as we raise the vibration of our own consciousness, of course, 
it goes down the street. <laughs> your neighbors will feel this on some level. Do you know? It goes into your garden. It goes to your animals. It goes to your friends. It goes through your family line. Whether they agree or don't agree or know or don't know, are aware of these kinds of things or not aware, it is like walking through the world with a smile versus, you know, prepared for the worst. And, and it's like a kind of decision that we make when we meditate to hold up, to hold up, even though all of you and me are experiencing things that are challenging, that are asking more, that are making us go through our paces of diff whatever they are and whatever the subjects are in your life, of money or work or relationship, all the subjects of our life are being challenged in different ways. And when the world is going through stress, which it has been and is going to be for some longer time going through that, it's easy for us sensitive people to think that the energy is our own. And of course, some of it is, right? We're, we're definitely playing into that. But it is also what I call the energy, <laughs> right? So it's the energy is very stressful right now. So of course we're going to attach our subjects to it, right? The subjects that we worry about, the subjects that are our concern. If there's a health problem or if somebody in the family is having an issue. Or it, and so all that focus, ampli the this focus of our own focus is is highlighted by the stressing energy and so you have to keep remembering that it's probably not as much as you think it is because it's flaring because everything's flaring right now you see so how do you keep to your center in the meditation to find your center no matter what's going on to feel yourself calm, come back to that calm place within you to feel that knowing within you that's not in reaction that is simply the observer that is simply the witness and when we make a movement or speak words right or even think thoughts we're, we're conscious like what do, how are you holding all of this so there's easy to get inflamed by the energies that are inflaming right but how do you still hold love no matter what to hold love no matter what. That's always the answer. So how do you come back? What is love? What is love anyway? What, how does love translate into this situation? How does love, and I don't mean personal love now, I'm talking about universal love, that great big God force love. How does that love translate to this subject of a job, <laughs> right? Whatever it is, that, that mundane world thing that we that are very real, that we have to work with, that we get to work with, and also our community and the greater community of the whole planet. So when we meditate together, we're harmonizing our, our literally our, our, the whole chakric line, and we're harmonizing ourselves with light, with soul, with higher consciousness on purpose and that is why you know these days I recommend that you meditate more than less right to make that be what you're really focusing on that you at least have that one spot in your day where you stop for a moment and sort of get off the merry-go-round right and see like how do I want to respond to this not what how am I am I reacting to it how do I want to respond to this and then love becomes how, right? Love is how. And so we start to think about like, well, how does that translate to this subject? And how does it translate to that subject? And so you become in that consciousness like a, an acolyte, right? Monk in training, right? You're, you're working on raising your own vibration. You're taking responsibility for your own vibration, right? You're starting to work with your own energy and see you know, when am I thinking right now? The sky is falling, you know? Or are we making a new world? And it's kind of both true, isn't it? You know, things are changing, right? And things will change quite a bit, you know, in these, and have already in so many ways. But those conclusions that we come to, too soon sometimes, 
take away the potential and the possibility if you uh, were a midwife and you were helping a child be born. There's a point where the mother would like to not have that baby <laughs> for at least a minute, right? <laughs> where you're just like, forget it. <laughs> this is too hard, right? There's so much stress in that moment and, it, and they mean it, <laughs> right? It's very intense for that person. But then the midwife says, breathe, breathe. Breathe, 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 right? So here we go, we're going to breathe. And so we're going to go into a meditation in a moment for this double Aquarius full moon. And I know there's a couple of Aquarians here in this particular meditation that I know. And so this is for you, right? And if you have Aquarius moon, if you have Aquarius sun, if you have Aquarius rising, or any place where Aquarius is in your chart, right? that or even the house that Aquarius falls into like if it's in your first house your second house your third house if you know your astrology you can always look and see what's the subject of Aquarius for you right and so you can look on your chart to discover that but if you are in Aquarius of course this is a powerful time you're getting a double reboot like a complete reset for this next period meaning like chunk of time like decade you know, it's a, a whole piece. A, new, a blue moon only happens, and it's so perfect of a name for it. Once in a blue moon, we say, it's about every two and a half years. <laughs> so it's just far enough apart, right, where you just, that's a long way away, you know, but it's not that long, and it happens pretty much, I think it's 2.7 is the average years that a true blue moon happens. So we're in that period that once in a blue moon is now, and what kind of Aquarian, when I say Aquarian subjects, come up for you? Like, where do you want to use this light? Where do you want to apply it? And those are questions to ask inside your meditation. So when we get hooked up, right, that's when you can, in the silence, ask questions, hear answers, right, from the soul. So it becomes one of the things that's just a side benefit of meditation is you learn to listen and dialogue with the soul. You can ask anything, anything. And you always know it's the soul and not your ego because the soul always is love. Nothing else. It's not critical. It doesn't say, except for this part, it doesn't say, if you do this, it is only love and always love. And that sound that it makes when, it, when you relate to it is love. It's of the highest sort of love without any exception. And so that's what you're learning to translate that energy into your actual life, into your actual brain, and into your actual experience, therefore. Okay, so let's light a candle. And let me see. If you have one. If you don't have one, just light one symbolically in your mind. <laughs> light, right? The candle of the consciousness, the candle of your awareness. And I want to start by just taking some breaths to organize the bodies. Body, mind, heart, and soul unified with the breath and feel right now that word that I'm using to describe this Aquarian full moon interconnectedness interrelatedness and just feel that connection with yourself interconnected with the self Right. with your breath and as you inhale and exhale you're using your breath as a blending element to take off the spiky edges of the personality to become in harmony with that higher consciousness of you and so breath by breath breath by breath you find your way in, you find your way home. 
you find your way in, you find your way home, that home within you. And you just feel yourself entering the field of consciousness, of love, of interconnectedness no matter where you are on the planet. No matter where you are on the planet. And sensing all those other hearts, all beings, feeling your interconnectedness with all beings. And just say a little prayer right here. All blessings to all beings. Inside yourself, just offer it. All blessings to all beings. All blessings to all beings. And you're offering this like a gift by your exhalation, by your remembering to breathe, by reminding the world to breathe in a sense, energetically. Inhaling and exhaling through your heart center now. And as you do, take note of your heart center and its state, and if it needs anything these days, what would support my heart chakra? Ask that. What would support my heart chakra? Take note of that. As you breathe gently in and out through the heart chakra, feeling your interconnectedness with everyone here, on Zoom, on Facebook, <laughs> and around the planet that are also meditating still because it's an exact time meditation at 737. So people are still in meditation deep, holding this full moon energy for hours all around it, and for days actually, three days. But some people f are holding in the silence still, in that meditation deep, just like your soul is in meditation deep now. And so from the heart, just feeling your this interconnectivity the world wide web right, of consciousness, of, of awareness that we are all part of. And being grateful you have a practice and a community to work with and that you can work with it with no community but a community is lovely because it holds it with you but that there's a choice and that you even know what meditation is, right? You know what it is. And as you're breathing through your heart center, just feeling that true, pure love, that big love, and just start to let it expand from your heart like a blossoming, beautiful rose, outwardly. And this holds your family and friends and neighborhood and community and city that you live in and place that you come from and your whole lineage, <laughs> right? And all the interconnectivity of where you came from and where your parents came from and where their parents came from and where your soul came from and past lifetimes came from, right? All these interconnections of this conscious soul that you inhabit now as the one, the you, that can hold all of this in your beautiful, blossoming heart center. And just breathing that love gently to the planet throughout this whole meditation. 
as you bring your energy now from the heart center to the center of the earth, the mother of the world, and you feel that groundedness. And from the heart center, in a silvery line of light, run it up into the head center and take your seat here as conscious soul. I am conscious soul. I am soul incarnated. I am light in form. I am light in form. Right. And in this place of the head center now, feeling another level of interconnectedness, which goes beyond this earth field into all beings of all times, past and future. And feel your own presence in the violet of the head center, in the awareness that lives in the silence. And in this place, we'll move into the meditation, we'll move into the silence with this phrase to work with gently. I am light in form. I am light in form. And this light of mine is connected to all light. I am connected to everyone and everything. I am light in form. And just take whatever of that into the silence and see what sparks as you open into the meditation now. Aware of the soul that is in meditation deep. Aquarian energy is electrical and blue. Feel that blue light, that blue white light moving through the universe, through the soul, through the crown chakra, through the meditating self in the head center and absorbing this light, absorb absorbing this intelligence, absorbing this genius.
and letting it flow into the mind, into thoughts and things and creations and ideas and concepts and philosophies and experiments and ideals and reminders so that everywhere you look from now on you begin to notice light you begin to notice the sparkle on a dewdrop you begin to notice the twinkle in someone's eye you begin to see the light in all things as those veils are removed from the eyes and you can see the soul by knowing your own by knowing your own and as you know your own you can then know another at the level of soul at the level of light feel the gift of this and the profoundness of that idea that animals have souls, trees have souls, people have souls, oceans have souls, mountains have souls, that you begin to recognize soul because you know yours. And so for just another moment, just in that blue white light, just feel, sense, the energy of your own soul light, letting it merge and blend with you, with the personality, with your body, with yourselves, with your awareness, so it becomes one, it becomes one. The soul and the self are one, Om. The soul and the self are one, Om. I and the soul, I and the soul are one and we are all connected, Om. Om, Om. So use this transforming light now as you breathe it in and out in the days to follow over these couple of months to work with the beginnings the very beginning energies of Aquarius to the exiting 29 degrees energies of Aquarius to what new forms will you make what no new ideals will you create what new will come in your life and to hold for that and to hold for the world. And this gently breathing then back into your heart center. Feeling this interconnectedness in these kind of disconnected times. Not you, not us, right? We are connected and we know. I am one with everything and everyone. Good. Use your breath to seal this meditation and allow it to show you what it was in your dreams, in your thoughts, in these days to come. See what comes up. Start to create create and keep a moon journal. You know, just take note. What did you get in your meditation? Did you ask anything? Was there answers? Always take the advice of the soul. <laughs> it's my advice. <laughs> There's not a higher you know, I call it uh, going over someone's head, <laughs> like quite literally, <laughs> you're going to the soul, right? You're going over their head to that part of them that knows and has your best interest at heart, right? 
for your highest good at the level of the soul. So watch how it plays out this next while and sort of what you're thinking about and how you maybe use these energies, these blue, white, electric energies, these transmutative, transformative energies of Aquarius. What area of your life is going to change? Right? What area of your life can be r remade right, with new light? I'll say one more thing just as a thought I've been having lately that I'm really feeling so much that there's this thing happening on the planet of this talking about polarization that we were, you know, been obviously is happening. And it does seem like, you know, it's like going like this, it feels right. And it seems like Arr! it's just this terrible f friction tension that's happening of there seems no um, connection. But the interconnectedness of this meditation, for instance, does begin to harness that energy and bring it together. But what I'm noticing just in my experience as I'm walking around out there and talking to people is that there's two things happening right now. And it's sort of like there's these parallel experiences going on where two people could be walking down the same exact road having completely, completely different experiences. I mean, like night and day, even though they're talking to the same people, going to the same job, having the same family. I mean, it's like if there were twins, right? And there's this thing happening that there's this sort of parallel going on. And one is really hard, you know, and one is not so hard. I mean, it's all hard right now, I'll say that, but one is less hard. <laughs> and, and even, I'm going to say, almost magical. Because what I'm also noticing, and as sticky as everything has been, there's also kind of like almost instant manifestations happening. And it's all what you do with it, and it's all how you hold it, and it's all how you're perceiving reality, right? So how do you work with this? How do you move with this? Which parallel are you on, <laughs> you know? And how do you get yourself into the soul, of course, is always in the parallel of love, right? So in a way you could say love or fear, right? And it seems like, you know, people are choosing a little more than I've ever seen before. So, you know, it's just something to think about. I, I certainly notice it because on, on one hand, there's so much energy moving so fast and things can manifest in ways they've never manifested before. And there's also things deconstructing all at the same time. It's just all happening. So it's very dynamic, you know? So more to come. Uh, so I wish you a really amazing month and um, lunar month. And we're, the next one is August 22nd, which I think is a Sunday. And so we'll be doing something on that day for the full moon. I'll be, I'm also doing my new moons, which are more um, teaching kinds of things and how to work with different spiritual energies, spiritual uh, practices to work with. And um, I hope to see you somewhere there or at the next full moon. So I hope you have a wonderful month, everyone. Thank you for being part of this and the interconnectivity of love <laughs> right, that we are all sharing together and out there as we go out into the world.